Hi everyone and thank you for being here. Now that summer is in full swing, I only thought it appropriate to create something summery related and today I will be showing you how to paint this fun and easy summer flower landscape following simple techniques. Real-time extensive version of this painting with extra techniques and exercises is available on Skillshare. It is free for one month. Okay, so let's begin. So for the sky, I'm using cobalt blue. Um, you can use any blue that you like uh, and black and white to begin with and I'm using a big flat brush. So using that blue directly, I'm starting from the very top and I'm gradually lightening the color as I move downwards. So just adding a bit more white to the blue. Rinsing off that color, I'm now trying to get some of that light orange pinky color that we see at the horizon. So I'm using a combination of magenta light, orange red, and brilliant red. Um, so they're basically red, orange, and a pink if you're using a different um, paint set. So adding a bunch of white to that, I'm adding simple horizontal strokes to the horizon line. Here I'm just blending the color a bit upwards so that it merges with the blue sky above it. Alright, so now let's tackle a bit of those clouds. Um, I'm getting the mid-tone of the clouds first, um, which means it's not the lightest color or the darkest tone, um, but those middle uh, colors that we see in the clouds. So you can get that by simply adding a, a bunch of white to the cobalt blue. Simply dabbing a few strokes here to get the base of the clouds.
Now adding a bit of black to this will give you some of those darker tones we see in the pic. And again, I'm just applying that to certain areas underneath the mid-tones. As you get closer to the horizon, make sure to keep your brush marks smaller and thinner to give the perspective of distance. Going slightly darker and adding Thalo Blue now to the Cobalt Blue with some white and black to give me that deepened dark tone that I see in the reference pic. So I'm just adding a few strokes of that color um, wherever I see it. Going in with some highlights now with plain white and adding that to places I see in the picture just to brighten up the sky a bit.
All right, let's give the clouds a rest and move on to the exciting parts of this flower field landscape. Right, so now I'm going to be using three different greens here. So starting out with chromium oxide green with a bunch of black to start our landscape. using that same color at the bottom as well. Now using light sap green and yellow green, I'm going to fill out the middle ground. Starting with light sap green first at the top and then at the bottom again. Now taking that yellow green, white and a bit of the light sap green all mixed together, I am covering the middle portion of this foreground. Do not forget to blend the edges when you are all done. Now taking a smaller filbert brush, let's add some texture to the landscape so that it does not look flat. Just a few little markings and color variations will do the trick. So I'm getting some white and black to the green base that we already have on my palette. Um, and just to kind of give me this muted olive toned color. And I'm using that color first to add some grass to the foreground. So holding a brush straight up to create those vertical lines for grass movement. Using that same color in the middle ground as well to add some variety of shape in the distance. Going back to the horizon part of the landscape and using that same oxide, chromium oxide green with some black to get um, distant tree-like shapes. A fillboard brush is great for this because it already has that curve to the brush so it helps to get that you know, tree-like shapes. I like using different sides to the brush to get thinner and more flatter shapes so using the side of the brush will give you that elongated, you know, thin, uh, thinned out kind of brush, um, uh, tree brush marks and using the front of the brush will give you more like flat, big shapes. Using some white to that oxide green now to give a variety of impressions to the distance for some more interest. So
using that same color mixture and adding uh, thinner, longer grass-like shapes in the front. So I've switched my brush to a more thin, thinned out um, long brush and I'm just adding a bunch of grass marks in the foreground. So really swift movements here. Try to kind of go quick with your hand movements and, and just make quick little marks for uh, grass-like impressions in the front. Alright, so let's begin adding these colorful summer flowers into our landscape here. This is a lot easier than it looks and you will see why in a minute. So I'm taking magenta pink with some white and adding one stroke marks to make these white flowers. I'm using a tiny filbert brush and make sure to hold your brush from the back handle to keep your brush marks loose. And then just keep adding short, simple, quick strokes to form the flower. When you take um, the white along with the pink, do not mix the colors completely. So ideally, you would want your brush uh, to visibly have both these colors so that it can translate that way on each petal. All right, so this is basically it. I will repeat the same process with different colors and kind of just move around the canvas. Keep some of your flowers small while others bigger, especially keep them tiny as you move further back towards the horizon to get the right perspective and distance. So I basically add a few specks when I work with these flowers far back and that will give the impression of far away flowers, so little dots. Feel free to use whatever color you fancy and just have fun with this process. It can be quite therapeutic uh, because this process is so repetitive, so take your time and enjoy.
just to add a different shape of flower here, I wanted to add some dandelions to the painting. So using white directly and a bristled round brush, I'm simply tapping on the canvas in a circular motion a few times to give the impression of these flowers. Lastly, I'm just going back to the landscape at the back and adding some highlights with a lighter green. Last final details are some splatter paint in the foreground to give a more additional loose feeling and impressions of tiny, tiny flowers. This to me adds a slightly more natural approach and it just makes the painting more unified. So using any rough brush that you have, take in some paint with more of a water consistency and flick off the bristles to get the splatter effect. Do it carefully so that you do not get this everywhere. And I will show you how to clean up in case you get it in places you do not want in a bit. To fix or take away any of the splatter in places you do not want, simply go over that section with the original color. Alright, so now that we are finally done, let's clean this off by painting the sides of the canvas. This is a really important step and will pull your painting together after. So I usually like to bleed the color of my painting onto the sides, so you will see me switching my colors to blues and greens mainly. Like mentioned, if you do want a real-time extended version of this painting, join me over at Skillshare for classes like this and much much more, plus get one month free. The link is below. And this completes our loose acrylic landscape for today. And if you do try this out, don't forget to tag me over at Instagram or on my Facebook group. I love looking at your recreations, it always makes my day. I do appreciate all the love and support I get from each and every one of you from all my orders lately, so thank you, and to shop my arts, do visit my website. Thank you once again, and happy painting!